All right, so that's it on uh, setting the tool offsets. And uh, so the next thing is to uh, to create the uh, the G code uh, using the conversational in Pathpilot. Conversational, it's kind of like uh, using uh, the wizard, one of the wizards in Mach three. So this is uh, Pathpilot's uh, version of it. So. Okay, so the next step is to go to the conversational tab here and go to the pocket. So the first thing we're going to do is a circular pocket and right here it's on rectangular so I'm going to change that to circular and the next thing to do is uh, it also gave a note that uh, to check your if you're in uh, Imperial uh, measurement in inches. Uh, check down here. Right now it's on G20, so that is in inches. Uh, if you're going to be in um, millimeters, uh, I guess that would have to be changed. I believe on the DRO you can just enter uh, G21. Um, but this this exercise is in uh, imperial or inches. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enter all the numbers that are in the book. over here so I'll go ahead and enter those numbers right. okay I've entered the information um, basically the name of the uh, g-code file uh, the work offset which is a g54 uh, and tool we're using tool 1 because we're using the 3 8 end mill spindle is going to be 5000 rpms uh, the the feed rate, the cut feed rate, will be uh, 60 inches per minute. Uh, the Z feed rate, or the plunge, will be 30. The Z clear is a positive number, so that's the clearance, or what height the uh, it's going to move over the part to clear the the uh, the part. Um, the of course we're going to be drilling in the center, so it's going to be zero. Uh, the pocket diameter. Uh, the diameter of it's going to be 3.25. Uh, the Y, of course, will be in the center also. Um, the step over is uh, 0.25, which is how and what increments it goes out um, uh, when it's going out around in the circle. Uh, the depth of the Z depth of cut, uh, that's how it's going to go up. Uh, a hundred thou in each depth of cut and it's going to stop at uh, minus so it's only going to take one depth of cut because uh, it's hundred thou um, and uh, the Z start is zero so it's going to be on the top of the uh, uh, workpiece so um, once that's all entered then I can uh, post a file and click save and it is, as you can see, it's now generated the uh, the G code here and the toolpath over here. All right. Okay. The next step is to run the G code. Uh, we've set uh, Z zero, but I don't know. I missed a step in there someplace. I've got to set my uh, X and uh, Y zero here. So I'll go ahead and uh, this is just going to kind of be eyeball. Um, I'll drop my Z down. So. I can see a little better uh, why I'm just kind of eyeballing it in the middle of the piece of wood uh, and the X not quite as critical because it's kind of wide okay that looks pretty good I'll go ahead and uh, zero the other two, I'll zero my X and zero my Y. Okay, the next step is to max uh, slide the max bell, I guess that's maximum level, uh, slide that all the way to zero. Um, basically, the, the machine's not going to do anything, it's not going to move or anything uh, without that turned on. Um, 
that's basically to, you know, in case I did something wrong, you did something wrong, it doesn't just crash the end mill into the vise or something like that. Now you can slide it up slowly as you're sure that it's doing the right thing. Uh, and the next thing to do is to uh, select cycle start. Okay, so I guess it's supposed to go to its start location uh, for tool change. Uh, but since I have it on zero, it's not going to move, so I'm going to slide that, the slider a little bit, so it can go to its tool change location. And now it's telling me to insert the 3 8 end mill into the spindle. So I'll go ahead and change that. Okay, now we'll go ahead and... I've got the, uh, the tool changed. I'll go ahead and click uh, Cycle Start. The spindle has started. That seems to be doing good. Okay, that's it. At least for the pocket. Let me uh, get a brush here. Well, I guess I'll just blow it off. Okay, well that cut pretty good. Pretty smooth. All right, now I'll go on to the uh, the next part, which is the uh, the engraving. All right. Okay, so the next step is to go back to the conversational and uh, select the uh, engrave tab and uh, basically enter all of this information in there. All right, I will uh, enter that. Okay, well, it looks like the information on this side is basically the same, except I changed it to uh, tool two. Um, change the text. It said Tormach. I put the PCNC. Uh, change to, to free mono oblique. And it gives you a preview of it right there. Um, they've got this based on, on this example, they have this based on this dimension. So I'm not going to mess with the text or the, uh, the font or anything. Uh, otherwise I have to recalculate where the, the base is, where it starts and stuff. Um, the height of the text is right there, uh, and then these justifications actually aren't in the book, so maybe this is something they added later, um, but this is giving the X and Y base basically where the text is going to start from this corner here, and uh, where we're starting on the Z, we're already uh, uh, 100 thou down because of the... Uh, uh, the pocket and so we're starting at that point and we're going down uh, uh, 50 thou um, depth of cut uh, for the engraving and uh, I think that's about it for the conversational okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run the program it's appended so it's actually gonna run back through the same file as before it's going to recut uh, this pocket but we'll just go ahead and do that um, I'm going to take the slider the, the Maxwell slider down again just to be sure and then select cycle start and 
bring the slider up. It already knew that the uh, the 3 8 end mill was in there, so it just proceeded to cut it without asking for a tool change. It knew it was in there already. Now it should ask for a tool change. I'll go ahead and change the tool. Okay, I went ahead and changed the tool. And now we'll select the uh, cycle start. Wow, that was pretty fast. Okay, well you can kind of see an outline on there. I actually had the wrong uh, end mill. It was supposed to be done with a, a 1 8 end mill. So it doesn't exactly look like it's supposed to. Uh, for that reason, but uh, basically the, that was a success that uh, the whole thing went off without a hitch. All right. Okay, well there you can see it a little better there. Um, of course it would have looked better with the eighth inch end mill. And, you know, it would probably look a lot better if you are doing this in like metal or oak or something like that. Uh, this... Uh, this wood tends to just kind of flake off. Um, so, all right, well, that's it for uh, the introductory uh, milling practice. And uh, I guess the next video is going to be uh, about the fog bell. I was going to do that first, but I figured I'd get this out of the way. Um, got the fog buster over here. I got the. Uh, the compressor here already and I got the line and everything so that will uh, be the next video All right. if you like this video please give it a thumbs up uh, any comments feel free to leave them in the comment section below and if you haven't subscribed I'd appreciate you subscribing All right.